At GitLab, we have one vision, everyone can contribute. And that underscores absolutely everything we do. So I thank you so much for coming in and giving your time today to find out more about using GitLab. My name is Heather McNamee. I'm the developer marketing manager here at GitLab. And sometimes if you message us on Twitter, that'll be me sometimes talking. So I'm always happy to hear from GitLab users. Welcome to our first time doing a GitLab introduction webcast. This is a step-by-step -step of the GitLab workflow. We're going to be going through uh, from the start to finish of creating issues and using GitLab from the UI. So of course, if you have any questions, um, keep them coming. GitLab is where you go to collaborate on code. And GitLab is actually used by 100,000 organizations and millions of people worldwide. I can see you're actually coming from all over the place to join us today. And that's really fantastic. So please do check out our website to find out more about GitLab. And I'd like to introduce our special guest today, my colleague, Yob Vandervoort. He's the VP of product. And you can find him at Yobvo, J-O-B-V-O uh, on Twitter and ask him any questions anytime. And so, Yob, how about tell us about yourself? Thanks, Heather. Um, yeah, so I'm Job. I'm the VP of product, meaning I have to make sure that we ship some cool new stuff every month in GitLab. And I think with that, I will just dr drop into what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to give you a little overview of a basic workflow in GitLab. So what if I, you know, I wake up in the morning, I start my computer and I start GitLab. What do I do? And if I want to make a change, you know, what, what, how do I do that exactly? And what is the easiest way to do this? So I'm going to show you how to create an issue, how to make a merge request, and you know how you should handle getting feedback and a little bit in merging. And I will show you a little bit more than that, but let's get to it. If you have any questions, we will try to answer them during the while I show this or afterwards. Just ask them whenever and uh, let's see. So with that, I'm going to switch to GitLab. And what you see right here is my little instance. This is my own little GitLab instance where I have all my important project, projects like uh, cats versus dogs, but we'll get to that later. When I start GitLab, this is what I see. So you have the navigation here on the left that you can unfold. And you see here all my projects and I can, for instance, look at my activity. But what I would typically do nowadays, and it's, this is only since the last GitLab release, is rather than looking here, the first thing I do is I go to my to-dos. So, and my to-dos, I will show you what they are. You can see them here on the left, or more conveniently, I think, is here in the top right, you see a little seven, meaning I have seven to-dos. So let's have a look at them. So in the to-dos, you see whenever someone in GitLab assigns you something or mentions you anywhere, like you see Heather did here, she said, or she wrote at Yob, I, and automatically GitLab makes a to-do here. And that allows me to quickly have a look and do something with that. If I'm happy with it and I don't want to do anything with it, I can simply press done. And in that case, the to-do automatically gets removed. But if I actually go there and I do some sort of action, GitLab will also remove it from my list. So it tracks whether you still have things to do. So in this case, we see that Heather mentioned me on a merge request. We see here the reference of the merge request, which is a one. So a bang, you can reference a merge request and a one is the number. And she says, can you give this a quick check in the cat project? So let's have a look. All right, so here I see a work in, pro uh, work in progress merge request. And a merge request that is work in progress is one that someone is still working on. So they don't want you to merge it yet. And you see it here that GitLab locks the merging of it. So we have here the merge request by Heather and she asked me here in the bottom, can you give this a quick check? And I, I was linked here when I clicked on my to-do. So I'm going to look at the changes she made. So there's a number of commits here already, some by mine, some by her. And she says, and she added these types of cats. Now, let's have a look. What do I have to say about this? I think it's, it's a nice uh, list, but my cat used to be called mouse, and I really want my cat to be added there as well. So maybe I can say here, header. And if I type add, then I automatically get a suggestion for whoever I can mention and they will get a notification and a to-do of this. So I'm not going to say, Heather, can you add my cat? Her name was Mouse. 
All right, so I add a comment and we see if we go to discussion, you see that here it appears as well. All right, if I go back to my to-dos, you see that the to-do that was there for that specific merge request that was number one uh, from the cat project, that's gone now. There's a number of other ones, but I'm just gonna leave this and we'll, we'll get back to this later. Yeah, actually a good question just came in about the WIP, the WIP syntax you put into the title, as we saw, mm -hmm. um, makes it so it can't be merged accidentally. Someone asked, mm -hmm. will there be like a button or a switch for that? Or will we always use the syntax in the title? Or why is it done that way? Um, we're thinking about adding a link or a, a button to, to remove this easier and to add this easier. Yeah, I think for now we'll leave it like this. Um, but over the next few releases, we'll add something to make this a little bit easier because I agree that we can improve this. For now, we leave it like this because we want to make it a little bit of a pain so that you can't easily click uh, both things away, but we can make it at least a little bit easier. All right, so I'm back at here at my dashboard. So you can always go there by just clicking on the logo here. And uh, I wanna start working and I wanna do some work on my dog project. So. What I could do is I could go straight to the project, but maybe it's interesting to show you uh, how things are organized. So if you see my list here of projects, you see that they all have two things and a slash. So they have a name, a slash, and then another name. So this is the namespace, in this case, cats versus dogs, is the namespace for a number of projects. And in this case, it's a group. If we go to groups, we see here cats versus dogs. And in the way GitLab is organized is that you have groups and under those groups you have projects and if you have a repository that's always part of a project and a project has several features and I'm going to show you. So let's have a look here I'm in the cats versus dogs group and I want to go to the dog project and what you see in GitLab is that here on the left the navigation changes depending on where you are. You also see always here on top exactly where you are so in this case I'm again under the cats versus dogs project in the dog project. And for each project in GitLab, you get a whole bunch of tools. So you have your repository, which is what you expect, right? When you have um, a Git repository. So you have all your files here with their history and their commits. But what you also have is tools such as issues, merge requests, labels, a wiki, and much more. So today I'm gonna show you some of these features by you know getting an idea of how, how you would do things. So looking here at the, pro, at the files, I have a readme and I have a dog name list. And here below what GitLab does is it always renders a readme for you. So this is a markdown file and it already shows you how it would look if we would render this. You can also see this at the project homepage, for instance. This is configurable. You can also have the files here. Now, Looking at this, in this case, I want to make a change here because I think these types of dogs, that should be in a separate file. I, I don't think it should be in a readme. So how would I go about changing that specific file, creating a merge request and having someone actually review it? So let's try doing that today. The first thing I'm gonna do, and this is a, an adv a good advice in general. If you're working on something, and you wanna have a single place to combine all your information, what you can do is you can create an issue. So let's go to issues. And I see that there's already a number of issues here and I'm just gonna collapse this so we have some more space. And I'm simply gonna create a new issue. And what I want to do, and I'm gonna remove this because I'll retype it, there we go. I want to move the types of dogs into their own file. So let's call it like that. Move types of dogs into own file. And to do that, there's two steps. And there's a nice little trick in GitLab. You can make little task checks. And by making tasks, it's easy to check off what you've done and what you still have to do. So I could say, to do this, I have to create a new file with uh, types of dogs. And then I want to move the contents of the readme into this file. Move the contents of readme into this file. 
there we go. So, and to get an idea of how this actually will look when once we press submit issue, you can press preview and you see that it creates these nice little checkboxes that I can actually check off. I can assign this to someone. In this case, I'm going to do it myself. So I'm just going to assign it to me. And one of the nice things about GitLab is, is that you have milestones where you can collect different issues. So let's have a look. I'm going to say, actually, I'm going to leave myself unassigned for now. Maybe someone else will pick it up. I'm going to say this is part of the milestone website launch because I'm making a website, cats versus dogs. I can set a weight if I want to indicate how much work this will take me. And I can set the label. Now, this is obviously a feature, so I'm just going to make a feature. You could create more labels if you need them, but I'm happy with this one. All right. I press submit issue and then the issue will be created. So we created the issue and immediately you can see people can vote here on it or maybe they can add a little emoji like a cute little dog. And you see that the milestone is set and there's a label. Now let's have a look at what this milestone actually means. So right now we have nothing yet, right? This is just to share information. So let's have a look at the milestone. So I can press immediately on the link there. I could have also gone here to the milestone view and got an overview. So here we see a milestone and a milestone contains everything related to whatever you call that milestone and whatever it is. It shows you the progress of it and it helps if you have a due date. So in this case, we see that there's only three days remaining to launch this. And here, what you can do is you can drag these issues that you created. So this is the issue we just created. It's number seven, move types of docs in the whole file. We can move them between the different steps because, and the basic steps are, it's open and unassigned. It's ongoing, someone is working on it. So it's assigned to someone, which is what I'm going to do, or it's completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to drag it here to the middle. And what happens is that GitLab assigns this issue to me and now I can start working on it. And this also, this is, this doesn't really do anything other than saying, okay, Job is working on this, but this is important to show to your colleagues or the people you're working with. I am working on this. If you happen to come across this, you know who to contact. All right. So I said now that I'm going to do this. We should start actually doing this. So I'm going to go back to the files. And the first thing I want to do, remember the issue, I wanted to create a new file with doc types. So I'm just pressing this plus and I can say new file. We've had a few questions <clears throat> actually asking about the markdown file format that you've been using. Maybe while you yeah. are demoing it, you can talk a little bit about it. Let's talk a little bit about the markdown. So markdown is a very simple way of formatting text uh, while using plain text. So if you have plain text, it's much easier to have diffs and such. You cannot have a, a diff file that is formatted, that has bold and, and italics and such string. And Markdown is an alternative way to still have this nice, rich render text, but still be able to use it as a plain text file. So, and, and for that, the Markdown standard is just one. There's, there are several others that can do this, for instance, RDoc. Um, and it's a simple way and GitLab automatically recognizes this type of file and renders them in a nice way. You can use it anywhere. So whether it's in comments or in issues or in merge requests, you can use Markdown anywhere. So in this case, I'm going to use Markdown as well. Let's call it types of dogs. And I'm going to say .md, which stands for Markdown. You can also do Markdown, but I like the short for And I just want to create the file and I want to give it some title. So I'm going to use one pound sign, which translates to the HTML tag H1, which should give you an idea of what it means. So, and this is types of dogs. Now, it's very important that if you make a change it, and you're going to commit it, and I assume that you know that what it is, we're going to say, we'll put this in the history of the repository that the commit message indicates what the intent is of your change. So in this case, it's really obvious. We just want to separate file for types of docs. And now we have to say this, specify the target branch. Now, the, the default branch is the master branch. So that's where everyone starts working from and then merges back into. 
but we don't want to make directly changes on there. If we make a mistake or, you know, we want to make sure that someone reviews it before it gets merged, we shouldn't immediately commit that to the master branch. So we're just going to rename this and we'll call it types of dogs. And a nice thing is, is that um, GitLab automatically says here, oh, start a new merge request with these changes. So I'm just going to press commit. And what GitLab does now is it creates this file. It takes all the contents. It puts it in a repository with a commit on the new branch that we created. And it uses that branch to create this merge request. So we did all those things with just a single click. And right now we're in the new merge request window. And here we see the request to create a merge request. This is really Actually, good. There's a few questions now that we've done a few different um, actions while people have been watching. And someone asked a question, you know, everything that you're showing in the UI, um, you're, you're actually showing things like creating commits and you created a branch. They want to know, can you actually still do everything with Git from the command line? And then does that get represented within the project also? Yeah, absolutely. So if you do, when I use Git from day to day, most of the things that I do, especially if it's larger things or for instance, complex development workflows, I do it through Git on the command line. And whatever you do on the command line, whenever you push to GitLab, because you set GitLab as a remote, then everything will just appear there and it will work exactly like you expect it to. In fact, when I push a commit from the command line to GitLab and I go into GitLab, GitLab says, hey, I saw you just push some new commits. Do you want to create a new merge request from that? So you have the similar kind of quick workflow, uh, but it's also fully supported with the command line. Ah, very good. And some questions about what's going on with Git underneath all of this. Um, someone was asking, you know, what is a branch? And then, you know, is there a limit to the total number of branches that you can actually work on simultaneously? Maybe you can talk a little bit about what's going on with Git underneath. Yeah, so Git is completely distributed. So you normally use it locally. And then whenever you're happy, when you're satisfied with the change that you've made, you want to share it with someone else, you can just distribute it to another remote location or another location like GitLab itself. So whenever you push a branch to GitLab, it, it just pushes it into the repository, the same representation of the repository on GitLab servers or on your own servers if that is where you run GitLab. Now, you can have as many branches as you want. A branch doesn't cost you anything. The only thing that Git tracks is the difference between where you branched off from and the commits that you made. And everything else, it doesn't duplicate, so it doesn't need more space. So you can create millions of branches without any problem. Typically, and I will show you this in a bit, you will actually remove the branch after you merged it. So in most circumstances, for a typical repository, you might have a few hundred branches alive at the same time, but definitely not more. But there's no real limit to it, though. That's brilliant. Cool, good stuff. Right. I suppose we've seen a little bit of what's going on underneath there. People are asking questions that are Git-related. I'm going to keep those coming, and we're going to start looking at some stuff that uh, just GitLab does, I guess, soon. Yeah, so I'm now creating a merge request with the changes that I made. I've assigned it to myself. I'm going to put this here in a web in a milestone so that we can easily track it. And I can add a label. I don't have to, um, but I could. Now, in the bottom here, we see that I made a single commit, separate file type for types of a separate file for types of dogs. And if I click on changes, I see here that I actually made this change that I created this file and that I added a line here. So let's submit the merge request. So right now here, this is the same thing as I showed you in the beginning where Heather made a change and we wanted to review it. And here we can see the same thing. So now I created this and I, what I did is I signed it to myself because I'm not completely happy with it yet. And I can look here at the changes. So. What I could do, and I told you about this before, I can reference anything from the issue, from the comments. So if I wanted to say header, um, this is the, you know, this is the issue that it is relates to. I can simply type this header. This is the issue it relates to. And then I use a pound and then I already immediately get this little suggestion box that says, Okay, you can reference these issues 
And it's just specifically this issue number seven. So you can see that here. And if I click on it, we of course go back here into the issue. We see actually that header said something. That's an awesome idea. So here back in the issue, I can actually check off one of these things because we created a new file with types of dogs. Let's check it off. And the nice thing is, is that if I look here on the, you see that GitLab reports this as well. And if I would go to here to issues, you see that this is actually represented that um, I completed one task and there's still one remaining. Now let's go back into the file. So I still have to move the contents of the readme into this file. So what I want to do is I want to take that little bit of text in the readme and add that to the same merge request. Now, how do I do that? Now let's find the readme first. Now, of course, you know that I can find it easily in files and it's at the homepage, but what if this was a harder to find file? Now there's a trick for that in GitLab. If you press the question mark on your keyboard, you get to see all the keyboard shortcuts available to you in any time. I urge you to have a look at these ones and try some out, but what I'm going to show you now, I think is the coolest and that is the T. So if you're anywhere in a project and you press the T, so just the T on your keyboard, nothing else. And I'm going to press it right now. You're brought to the fuzzy file finder or just a file finder. And what this allows you to do is you can quickly filter through all the different files and report and, and, and directories that you have in your project. So if I just want to quickly find the readme, well, we see it already here on top. I could just type the name like this. Same with the dog name list. All right. I can just press enter and I brought to that specific file. So what I want to do is I want to take this list and I want to take all these names and I want to add them to the other file. So let's um, take the raw file so I can just click on raw. And I'm just going to copy it. So now you see the difference between this is the raw file. So this is like the plain text version and this is the rendered version that you see right here. So I copied the list and I will go back to my merge request. And here, separate file for types of docs. That's the one I created. Oh, and Heather, in the meantime, she actually added some ideas. So she says, oh, some ideas to add. That's really nice, but I don't know any of these dog types. I don't know these dog types, but they are nice names all, all, all even though. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this file again. So we already have a merge request here. I already made a commit here and I just want to add another commit. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply press on edit. So I press edit. GitLab opens the file and it opens the file on the branch that we created earlier. You can see it here in the bottom, types of dogs. So I'm just going to paste what I just copied. So I press on paste and we see there's a lot of cute little dogs here. I can actually get a preview of the file if I wanted that shows you me the markdown rendering. But I'm happy with this. I know this works. I just have to add commit message. So I'm going to say, um, add the dog types and now i'm going to show you a cool trick so we have this issue remember issue number seven so if i want gitlab to automatically close that issue once this is completed once this file is merged then i can all i have to do is this i say fixes pound seven and it's the same thing as before i just say fixes and then number seven and i will commit it and you will see what will happen Cool. And um, as we're looking at this, um, there's been a few more questions just about Git in general. And I want to address them as you're doing this because one person, for example, asked, are there things you can do in Git that you actually can't do in GitLab? And then, you know, can you just sort of explain how GitLab relates to the structure of Git? And I guess they're asking about the hierarchy of folders, but I assume that means um, how GitLab works with Git. Sure. So, on the GitLab server, there's just the entire Git repository. So if something that you cannot do in the UI 
in GitLab, which is very little things. You can do almost anything right now. But if there was something, some specific uh, Git command, like a really complex command, like Git bisect, you can still perform them and, and it will work perfectly with GitLab. Um, there, the, there's just a normal Git repository underlying the, the GitLab UI. So it's completely compatible to with whatever you do. So you don't feel restricted by the fact that you're having to use GitLab. You can always do your things locally in any way that you want and use any Git commands, no matter how new. Brilliant, thank you. So remember that I have here a new commit and I said fixes number seven. Now what GitLab did is it recognized that and now it says here, accepting this merge request will close issue number seven. So this is a really powerful trick to make sure that you always have, so we created an issue, we have this central point where we know all the information is and can keep our colleagues up to date, where we can have a discussion. And now we created this change and it would be annoying to always have to go back. It would make cleaning up things really annoying. So just by saying in my commit message fixes number seven, GitLab will automatically do that for me. All right, we see also here that I added the commit. And if we go to changes, let's turn off the comments. We see here the changes that were made. I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to accept a merge request. I'm not going to assign it to anyone else. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to say remove source branch. So earlier someone asked how many branches can you have? Well, you can have as many as you want. But what you can do is you can just remove them once you're done with it. So we're going to merge this branch, the types of docs, the change that you see here below into master. And once we do that, we know that the changes are in the repository in the master branch where everyone will be using them. So there's no more use for our branch. There's no unique information there anymore. So we're going to say remove it after it's merged. And, and that's it. We're just going to press accept. All right, so what GitLab did now is it merged the change into the branch. If I wasn't happy with this and I really regret this suddenly, maybe I pressed it accidentally, uh, which shouldn't happen because I could, could have used the WIP, the work in progress. I could press here revert to actually revert that. Right. Let's so have what a look happened at when you, uh, if you deleted the branch as you merged the request, is the, someone asked, will the history of that deleted branch be lost forever? Well, Ironically, the history is not lost because we actually merged that history. So let's have a look at the commits. It's an excellent, excellent question. So if we look at the commits, and I, I hope you do remember what my commit messages were. They were separate file for types of dogs and add the dog types. And we see them here. So what GitLab did is it merged those commits, that specific piece of history, the unique piece of history in comparison to the master branch into the master branch right here. And actually it added also a commit, uh, a merge commit that shows us the, in, the complete change. So if I were to look here, separate file for types of dogs, you see the same change that we had before. The commit uh, ID is still there, uh, but the only difference is, is that it merged into master. But the, the same changes are there. And then we see the next commit that I did act at the dog types. We see that all it did is we just added these dog types. And if we go to the merge commit, we see the changes all together. And in fact, if we look here, we see that it even links back to the merge request. So we see that see merge request number five. And if we click on it, we see the merge request that we made earlier. So we know that the files are here. We know that the changes are here. Um, you can see the history here in the commits. And actually, if you want to quickly find a specific commit, you can simply type here, um, like types, and then it will filter out anything related to that. So this is a really easy way to quickly get to a certain commit if you're looking for it. All right, so remember that we were working on the website launch and it had a certain due date. Let's have a look in the milestone, how it looks now. So if I click here on milestones, you would see here all the milestones you have. Luckily, I only have one. I don't have to worry with pressure other than this one. And we see that it's actually 70% complete. Why is that? Well, we see that GitLab automatically closed, completed or closed the issue. So remember, this was the issue that we had. And if I click on it, we see here that it's closed. 
And it was done automatically by merge request number five and the specific commit that is related to that. You can actually check this one off, but it doesn't really matter anymore. So let's go back here to the milestone. So we see now that this one has been moved here automatically and the merge request that we linked here as well, it was number five, you see it right here. All right, so we proposed a change by making an issue. We actually made the change in GitLab and made the merge request. And then we merged it and we closed the issue. So now that I did all this, um, and let's say that this took me a whole day, it's important that I should check my to-dos, right? And if you've been paying attention, this one actually went up again. Hey, Heather apparently is done with her merge request. She assigned me the merge request. Let's have a look. And that was actually pretty quick because this was already 23 minutes ago. So I asked Heather, hey, Heather, can you add my cat? The name of my cat was Mouse. Let's look, look if she actually did it. She said she added it. And look here, ah, there's Mouse at, uh, at row 15. And we can see at the commits at uh, Job's cat's name. Great. So she assigned it to me. And because she assigned it to me, I take responsibility for this. So I should be the one uh, deciding whether to merge it or not. Well, I like the, uh, the fact that she added my cat. I like the changes. I see that she linked an issue. So it will actually close issue number two. So I'm happy with it. So I'm going to say again, remove source branch, and I'm going to accept it. Yeah, while you're doing that, um, it's interesting. Some people are asking a few questions. Um, isn't it good for the history and easy backup to actually save those branches? And they're wondering, like, should you actually not, you know, delete those? And is this merge by default, no fast forward, what we're seeing here on GitLab.com? So first to answer the question about the branches, you don't lose anything. Right? The changes that you made, the specific commits, they still exist. You don't lose the history at all. There's no good reason to save a branch which does not have, contain any unique information. The, if you make any commit ever and you do something else with it later on, even more complex Git commits, you can always find it back in the history. Um, so nothing changes in that regard. So no, there's no good reason for you to save your branches. If there is unique information in a branch, yeah, you should keep it. For instance, the GitLab releases, we put them in separate branches because then we can work on, continue working on in the master branch while we have a certain branch that is reserved for that release. We can do and another webcast on that just to say that yeah. it's pretty complex. It is. Um, some questions about some of the things you've shown as well. Some of these things are happen happening magically when you add, you know, fixes number, you know, ID number or closes ID number. Uh, two questions. First of all, will that work if you're doing that from the command line? And then secondly, what if they don't use the right syntax or they want, or maybe they want to use a different syntax, um, either if someone makes a mistake with the syntax or about maybe configuring that syntax? So if you make a mistake in the syntax, no big deal. You can, there's two things you can do. You can make another commit or a comment to do the same thing. GitLab will not complain. It will just not uh, recognize it as a specific link. Right, So you can either make another commit or you can add a comment. You can also force push a change. So you can actually change your commit message. Uh, I don't re recommend doing that, by the way. Or, or uh, edit the merge request description, of course, as well. Of course. Yeah, or edit the merge request uh, description. Yeah, of course. Um, what was the other question? Well, can you, you can, can do that from the command well, line? Yeah, yeah, of course. So. A GitLab doesn't care where you make the commit or how um, or whether you fill it in in GitLab or outside of GitLab. So if you're on your command line and you type fixes number two, it will work exactly the same way. If you mention someone, it will work the exact same way. So yeah, this works wherever you use it. Excellent. Um, people are asking, you sort of touched on the fact that this is a really complex topic. Once you know What we're actually looking at right now is GitLab flow. People have, have spotted that. Um, and there are people asking about branching strategies and, you know, what's a good practice in using tags. We could actually, and we do plan to have one webcast just focusing on that in particular, but maybe you just want to highlight the fact that we are talking about GitLab flow. Yeah. So 
the the basic flow that I followed is, is what we recommend, and it's it's part of 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 GitLab flow. So GitLab flow encompasses more than this. It it relates to more complex branching types, but the very basis of this, where you have a master branch, you branch off from that, you change something, you make a merge request, and you merge it back into the master branch, and that's it, and you throw away your branches. That is the very basics, and. The thing about this strategy is, is that it's very simple, it's very easy to use, but it scales incredibly well. It doesn't matter how big your team is, it keeps scaling because you are encouraged to make smaller branches, to make branches and merge them in quickly and get review all the time. Um, and that works really well in our experience. And it doesn't really matter how big your team is. So let's review. And then we have still some time for questions, I think Heather will let me know. So what I said is, Start by creating an issue, right? Make sure that you communicate what you're doing and it's a nice place to have uh, comments about your work. Then get it your work out as early as possible. And we saw that Heather did this excellently. She added a work in progress in front of a merge request so that I could give early review before even merging it. And then later, uh, after I added some comments, only then she opened it up for actually merging it. Use the code review tool that we have in merge, re um, in merge requests. You can add line by line comments on divs. You can do it in merge requests. It's really important. You want to make sure that whatever you merge is good. And you know, make it easy to find things. If you use this, if you reference things by using a pound sign to an issue or add mentioning someone, or even better, using fixes this or closes this, then GitLab will automatically link all those parts and even close automatically issues for you. And lastly, by making by merging things and by keeping this merge uh, flow very simple and making sure that everything is referenced, it becomes really clear what everyone is doing and what is happening. You don't have to handle any complexity in your repository. So with that said, Heather, are there any more questions? Yeah, quite a lot of questions, actually. Um, some interesting questions. Uh, came out throughout the talk and people were wondering about importing, you know, either are there import helpers if they want to import from other systems such as, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know, uh, Matness is one, um, but also GitHub and just wondering, you know, what happens when you, when you import? Yeah. So if I press here in the top right, I can create a new project. Projects are free. So we, we made it very easy to make one. And of course, I, I can choose where to set my project if I want to create a new project. But if not, if I want to import one, I have all these options right here. And depending on your GitLab instance, you might even have more than this. It depends a little bit on how it's set up. But yeah, so you can import really easily from GitHub, from GitLab.com, from Bitbucket, wherever you come from, you can import it or just by URL, for instance. Um, you click on the button and you can you can import. And for instance, if you use the GitHub importer, we import, if you want, all your repositories at once or maybe one at a time, however you want it. And we'll not only import the code, we'll also import the issues and the pull requests, everything, even the wiki will import. So this is really easy way to switch to GitLab if you, if you just go to the top right, new project, and then you just click the button of where you want to import from. That's brilliant. Um, there were some questions about some of the, the th features we saw early on, like milestones and issue weights. Um, issue weights, are they only available in the Enterprise Edition? And then when we look at the milestone viewer or milestone display, they're wondering if all of the feature requests and all the bug tracking is, is going to go into the milestone. Like maybe you can just talk about some of these other ways to prioritize, I guess. Yeah, so to answer the first question, yes, the, the weight is only available in Enterprise Edition. To answer the second question, it's up to you to decide what is going into the milestone. So the way that I like to think about it, for instance, with GitLab, we have a release every month. So what we do is for all the issues that we want to have in a certain release, we'll put those in a milestone. So we will call a milestone, for instance, GitLab 8.6. This is the one we're working on right now. And then for all the issues that we want to do for that release, we'll just put it on that one. And of course, we set the due date to March 22nd, which is when it will be released. So it's really obvious for us, oh, there's so many days remaining and we are so far in, in the milestone actually. 
Good stuff. Again, some more questions about, you know, obviously maybe people are looking at this webcast and wondering about moving. Um, what about automatically mirroring a GitLab repo on GitHub or vice versa? Yeah, so with GitLab Enterprise Edition, you can actually have automatic uh, repository mir mirroring. So if you would want to do this, you can you can do that. You can set it up. You can point it to any uh, Git any Git repo to automatically mirror it, and GitLab will make sure it stays in sync. You can e evenly have branches that are not synced. It's um, but then we're going into specifics. Ah, oh, very good. And. Um... Some questions about GitLab CI have come through, and I wanted to point out that we have a complete webcast all about that on April 14th with our GitLab CI team. And the great thing about that is we're going to show you step by step how to use uh, GitLab CI, set up runners, and then you're going to see a little bit of behind the scenes and how it's built. Um, did you, I guess I've sort of answered the question in a way, but where, where, where does GitLab CI fit in this workflow? So the nice thing about GitLab CI is that it's not a separate part anymore. It's completely integrated in GitLab. I, I skipped over it for this uh, demo, but it's all up, up in there. So for this repository, I actually didn't have uh, any CI integration. But what, what you would see is that in your commits, for every commit, you would see the status from GitLab CI. You, of course, have here the builds of CI. And as I said, I left it out of this project to keep it uh, simple, but you would see here all your builds. And most importantly, you would have here in your merge requests, you would see here the status of your CI for this specific branch. And you can evenly have even have GitLab automatically merge things depending on the outcome of the build. So there's a lot of cool stuff we have to show from CI. And I think this is the reason why we have a separate webcast on that, because there's just so much to talk about and so much to show. Um, but yeah, if you're talking about CI in GitLab, it's everywhere. And we're continuously working to improve this, to add more places to in integrate CI. Excellent. And there's a few questions about, you know, okay, can you reopen an issue? And someone actually asked, you know, what if you found that, you know, there was a regression or some type of problem, would you actually go and open a new issue yourself or would you reopen an issue? How would approach would you take? Uh, it depends a bit. So what I typically do is if there's a bug, that's a reason to open a new issue. If you want to revert something or maybe someone implemented a certain feature, but it's not complete yet, that's probably a good reason to reopen an issue. And you can reopen an issue. Just go to closed. And well, this is the one we just, oh, we just closed, right? And I could just say reopen. So yeah, you can do this. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. If you want to have this whole conversation and all these links at hand and see exactly what happened and move from there, that's good. You can also just open a new issue and reference the old one. So this is issue number seven. Let's say that I close it again and I create a new issue. Uh, fix bug cost by seven. And then um, relates to seven. And if I do this, then I will have this link to the old issue, whether it's closed or not, doesn't matter. Um, I can click on it, you'll see the old issue, and then you can just work from a clean slate here. You know, it's it's like commits, issues are free, so in doubt, it's usually easier to create a new issue to have this whole clean slate, but it, it depends a little bit on the, cir the circumstances. No, good point. Um, curious, actually, as well, uh, oops, excuse me for a second, <laughs> sorry. Uh lost my questions page. Um, wondering actually about labels, going back to some of the things again that we saw earlier and we did, we did show very quickly, where did those labels come from? Maybe you can just show how they're customized and uh, listing um, label pages, label pages. Yeah, so if you, for, you can set these for a project, you can set them for a whole group or even the whole server, but most simply in a project, you can go here to labels and you can just create a new one. And you can even, even see how many issues there are open. And in GitLab 8.6, we're, and we're now in 8.5, just for clarity's sake. So March 22nd, we're releasing 8.6. We're adding some really cool superpowers to labels where you can track individual ones. But you could just add a new label by pressing new label, giving it the title, for instance, um, super important. Um, and then you can set a description if necessary, and you could choose a color. You can even uh, set a custom color if you want. 
and he created. It's as simple as that. And from that moment on, anywhere in this project, you can use this label, you can reference this label, etc. That's good stuff. And maybe you can take us back again to the milestone view. I I think it was fantastic to see when you when you pulled over an issue. But someone has asked, can they just manually change the milestone project uh, progress? Uh, this, no, you cannot change that manually. And it, there's a good reason for that. Um, why, what would it represent if you would manually uh, change this? No, so you, this is purely dependent on what is below here. In future releases of GitLab, we're planning to make this more powerful and add more metrics to it and add graphs, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, this is, um, it's simple, but it's also transparent. Okay, good point. Um, someone asked actually about using GitLab to import from an old version of GitLab, but what would you say about upgrading GitLab from a very old version? Again, it's one of those things where it's case by case. Typically, if especially if you're on Omnibus, upgrading is extremely simple. If not, it's doable. Um, our service engineers, they do it every single day, and it's sometimes for recent versions, but often from really old versions, it's possible. Um, that's, that's all I, I can really say. It's It depends on your specific situation, but uh, typically it's not very hard. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much. I There are a lot of good questions here, and if I haven't actually said your question out loud right now, I will respond by email. I think that it's totally fantastic. There's a lot of questions coming in about you know GitLab workflow and simply you know, how do you work with your colleagues to push code to a repository if you want to merge it? And, um, you know, who's got the first, whenever they have the, um, uh, to make the commit, who's pulling the code and who's doing the commit, just really wants to know, like, the whole GitLab flow. This webcast sort of gave you an overview of that whole approach, and we will go into, like I said, in another webcast, we're going to just dig into that step-by-step -step at a bigger level of how you kind of collaborate together. I hope I hope we can sort of help you a little bit. Um, Yob, is there anything else you wanted to offer um, based on sort of what we've been talking about so far? Yeah, I think it's really exciting to get all these questions. Uh, it's really nice to hear so many people excited and interested about doing these kind of things. I would urge you to, you know, try out GitLab. Go to gitlab.com, see what you can do and maybe see what you don't understand and let us know. We can... You know, we improve GitLab almost purely based on the feedback of our users. And it's so important for us to, to get feedback. So no matter how you reach out to us, whether it's on Twitter or on our own issue tracker, um, we'd love to hear what you think, what you think could be better, what you like about it. Um, it's just great. And, it's, and, and thank you all very much for listening, of course. Yeah, definitely. There, the, there are good, really good questions about future features and you know which sort of tools we support um, for importing from SVN or ClearCase. There's a lot of different questions, very specific like that. Uh, you can actually, there's a page on about.gitlab.com, getting help. It's, uh, has all of the options available. But if you're using gitlab.com, we have a support issue tracker for that. If you would like to get uh, support, of course, you can pay our team to give you 24-7 support. I think it's 24-7 support, I should say. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. you know, absolutely, you know, we can give you help. And uh, you can catch me on at GitLab uh, on Twitter, of course, as well. But I will send this all out in email. So if you're watching this live, you'll get an email from us with all of these help links. And I will get to all of your questions. I can tell you that there are so many questions. We're really, I'm just, wow, it's excellent. And giving us a lot of really good ideas on how to follow up with you. So with that said, thank you all very, very much for attending. I um, will be sending you the recording. I guess that's it there. Thank you so much, Yob, for your, for your demo today. Yeah, happy to do it. Thanks everyone for watching. Okay, all right, bye-bye.